Today we're going to talk about how to reverse your eyesight and get rid of these right here. If you're anything like me and you sat behind the computer desk for many, many years staring in front of a computer, chances are you're probably wearing these right now. I'm going to show you some information that is going to make you very happy because there's a good chance you're not going to need these. And I'm not only going to be talking about poor eyesight, I want to talk about a lot of different problems that can go wrong with the eye, including increased pressure of the eye itself, what to do with dry eyes or irritation underneath the lid, and also a problem with your lens, which is cataracts. There's some great remedies for all of these things. We're going to go through them. And I think the first place to start is sharing some fascinating information where this whole problem starts. And it actually starts with the cones. Now, I need to explain a little bit of anatomy so you can understand what the cones are. I don't know if you remember ever learning about rods and cones. Those are little receptors in the eye that take information or light and they convert it to signals so you can visualize things. And so cones are more responsible for daylight, color, and fine detail. Rods have to do with more peripheral vision and seeing in the dark and also like shades of gray and things like that. So the real simple basics are we have this cornea, which is this little dome shaped thing right here that does help to focus light a little bit as the light comes into the eye. And then it goes through the lens right here and you have two little muscles right here that cause the lens to get thicker and more elongated. And that allows you to accommodate for distance. So you can actually focus on something far away or close up. It's called the accommodation reflux. And that has to do with the lens and the muscles. And so the lens normally should be very flexible, but as we get older, it becomes very rigid. So we'll talk about that. And then as the light comes in, it travels right into the exact back part of this eyeball right here. The retina is this complete back part right here of the eye, the entire thing. Think about the retina as wallpaper on the back of the eyeball, and it's connected to this nerve that goes deep into the brain called the optic nerve. So retina is the extension of your brain right here. So it's going to capture a lot of information. And then a lot of this information is being focused at this point right here. This is called the macula right here. And then a lot of the focus on this smaller part of the macula is called the fovea. Not that you need to know that, but the fovea has even a smaller section that things are focused on, almost the size of a grain of sand. In that location, you have the most concentrated cones of anywhere in the eye. And why that is significant is because there's something very unique about cones that will explain a lot of problems that you might be having with poor vision. The unique thing about this photoreceptor, the cone, is this. It has the most mitochondrial packed cells in the entire retina. So we start off young, having a tremendous amount of mitochondria. This is so dense. We get older and older and older. We start losing the mitochondria. And now we can no longer see finer details of things. Uh, colors are not as bright. We need glasses to see even in the daylight and especially at night. So if we look at all of the factors that relate to poor vision, this one single piece of information just jumps out and slaps me in the face. Massive loss of mitochondria. In the back part of the retina, the actually most important area of your eye that you need to be able to see without glasses. When someone reaches 60 years old, and by the way, I'm 60 right now, they need three times the light to be able to see if you compare it to a 20 year old. So why is that? Because in order to see, it takes a tremendous amount of ATP energy from the mitochondria. And so there's a couple different stages that we go through. Number one, contrast sensitivity. The brain's capacity to differentiate light intensity starts to break down. And so at night, when you're straining to see, you're having a problem with this contrast sensitivity issue. And that would be uh, the first thing that happens. The second thing that happens is in order to be able to even see during the daylight, we need a little more light. So we have to turn on the light to be able to see things. Before, when we were younger, we could just read it practically in the dark. Now, we have to shine a big light on it. 
Number three, we start seeing more glare in the dark. Okay, everything starts to really get foggy and uh, it's like, it's kind of dangerous if you're driving when it's raining out and especially foggy, it's, uh, it's not good. And then number four is when you start having more problems with the macula. They call that age-related macular degeneration. And what's happening is you're losing more mitochondria in this area right here. And now you really can't see uh, fine detail, so you need these right here. There's other problems with the eye as well. Uh, with the lens, you start developing this opaqueness where it's becoming cloudy. That's called cataracts. We'll talk about what to do in just a minute on that. And then also, when you are looking at your computer screen, you're fixated in a certain position, maybe two or three feet away from you, for long periods of time. And so now when you get up to look at things, boy, everything is blurred. And then there's a condition called glaucoma, which we have a lot of pressure in the eye. Before we get into what to do, I just want to mention type 2 diabetes. The eyes are very susceptible to blood sugar problems. In fact, this is why a diabetic has problems with the retina. It's called uh, retinopathy, which is a disease of the retina. And this is why one of the leading causes of blindness uh, comes from diabetes because of the high sugar going through the bloodstream. And that's what happens in the lens. And that's really what cataracts are. I want to mention another great, amazing book that's really hard to find. I think you can only find on Kindle. The author is Dr. Harold Shell, And he found that high doses of vitamin D3 can reverse glaucoma, but you have to get your blood levels up to like a hundred, okay? Now, for some people, that's like, oh my gosh, that's way too much. But if you read his book, it's fascinating because he gets into how to do it correctly, how to do it safely. And he also talks about a lot of other eye problems that can be improved with higher doses of vitamin D3. It's a fascinating read. I will put a link down below of that book. So now let's talk about what you can do for the eye to reverse these situations. It's red light therapy. There's a right way to do it and there's a dangerous way to do it. And I'm gonna explain both, but there's a tremendous amount of new research on this and you're actually exposing the retina to red light. So why does red light have anything to do with the retina? It helps to make the mitochondria more efficient and also correct some of the damage in that mitochondria. They found that you can optimize the mitochondria with this specific uh, wavelength, 670. And what's really cool about the simplicity of this therapy is you're going to be doing this for three minutes only in the morning once a week because apparently the effects last a whole week but there are so many devices out there right now that you don't even know if they're really at the right frequency you don't know how powerful they are uh, they're not really regulated that well what can you do to safeguard that and still get the benefits well, the first thing is I'm going to recommend closing your eyes when you put this light into the eyes, okay? Keep your eyes closed, even though there's some references that say, oh, it's not going to hurt you. Keep the eyes closed. Infrared can penetrate through your eyelids very easily. I'm going to put some links down below of several devices that have this thing right here. It's IEC 62471 exempt or RG1 low risk. and But I'm also going to put a couple other links of a couple other uh, red lights that don't have this, but they're designed for babies and they're just one little bulb. And they are specific to this frequency right here. So I think they're going to be pretty safe, especially if you keep your eyes closed. And the reason I want to put that there is because those bulbs are extremely inexpensive. I think there might be I don't know, five to eight dollars. But this technology is called photobiomodulation. There'll be more and more research on this, but I think it's quite exciting, especially if it can help your mitochondria in your cones, in your retina. So if that's your problem, that could be a great solution. Is there a way to make more mitochondria in the body? And yes, there is. Regular exercise, okay? Long hikes, walks, things like that, where you're getting a lot of oxygen. But I would venture to say that any exercise would be better than no exercise. Also intermittent fasting. Because we know when you have diabetes, you destroy the mitochondria and we create eye problems. 
What is the opposite of diabetes? Having a low blood sugar and running your body on ketones. So you want to do a low carb ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting with a lot of sleep. Number three has to do with most people are staring at screens for quite some time. And so they're focused on a very close object. And we need to reverse that because the, your eye muscles are in a contraction. And that's really going to affect your ability to focus and see things. By going outside and looking at something in the distance for at least two hours a day, something out of your house, because in your house, you don't have much space. Here's the thing that a lot of people do. They go for a walk. They're on their cell phones. They're not looking at objects. So the key of this whole thing is to be able to focus in on a tree branch, a leaf, a dog or a bird or something out there in your environment and keep looking at it and focusing out there for a period of time. That would be very, very therapeutic to undo this contraction. And also at different distances, like maybe 20 feet, and then like look at a, you know, a, a cloud in the distance and try to focus in on it. Very therapeutic. I want to talk about number four. There is a genetic problem converting beta carotene into vitamin A, which is going to affect the eye because one symptom of a vitamin A deficiency is night blindness. So our eyes need vitamin A. Let me give you some ideas on where you can get enough vitamin A. Egg yolks, liver, cod liver oil, butter. And the other thing to realize is if you have a bad liver, let's say you have a fatty liver or cirrhosis, or you don't have a gallbladder anymore, or you have a gallstone, or you have a, a gallbladder problem, or you have inflammation in your gut, you might not be able to even absorb vitamin A. So that's another factor. I wanted to bring that up. Let's talk about number five, lutein and zeaxanthin. Both of these can help you see better. Both of these protect the eye against oxidation. So they're very protective. They're very necessary. They also protect you against too much UV radiation. These two phytonutrients are also in kale. They're in pistachios. They're also in Swiss chard. There's actually more of it in kale and Swiss chard in pistachios than egg yolk. But in the egg yolk, it's way more bioavailable. So you're actually going to get more of it if you consume egg yolks than these other things. So it's not just the total amounts. It's how much you can absorb. Let's talk about number six, floaters. If you have floaters, that means you have uh, damaged proteins that are floating around in the eyeball. So getting your body in a state of autophagy is going to be the smartest thing to do with that. How do you do that? You just, you start doing intermittent fasting and then you fast longer, like you might go 48 hours, wait a couple weeks, and then you go like 72 hours. When you start doing prolonged fasting, your body's going to go into this uh, recycling mode and start cleaning up damaged proteins. And those floaters are going to go bye-bye. Now, number seven, I did touch on glaucoma a bit ago with Dr. Harold Schell. I'm going to put a link down below with his book, but he recommends taking higher doses of vitamin D3 with K2 and magnesium to help get rid of glaucoma. And he gets great results. I have found there's some research on also taking niacin. Let's talk about cataracts. And that usually comes from consuming a lot of sugar. Hidden sugar is like starches. As you clean up the diet and you get rid of the junk food and you do intermittent fasting, there's a great remedy that works fantastic with cataracts, animals and humans. You have to search it out. NAC as a natural remedy. It stands for N-acetylcarnosine. This comes in drops and you put it on the outside of your eye the cornea, it gets absorbed, it goes right into the lens, and it breaks up and dissolves those, those little uh, glycated proteins. So it's super effective of reversing cataracts. I'm not going to guarantee it's going to work for you. I don't know what stage you're at, but it's worth a shot, especially since it's not that expensive. There are other things that can prevent uh, cataracts. Going on a low-carb diet, benfotamine, Carnosine is another thing that's really good, but you can get carnosine when you have red meat. It's loaded with carnosine. Saffron is a 
fantastic remedy for age-related macular degeneration. It has been found to improve vision. I don't want to go too far into the details, but it's another remedy that works really good for uh, the macula. Now, number 10 is get a reading light if you're over the age of 50, because in the process of doing all this, it's going to take some time. And if you wanted just to see a lot better quickly, you can just get a good light. Uh, I'm going to tell you the light I'm going to recommend. It's called the High CCT Warm Light LED between 3000 and 4000 K. Okay, you can just do a search on that. And you want that light facing the surface or the book you're reading or the computer that you're looking at. So the light is enhancing your ability to see. 11, super important. This is a sunlight hack. If you were to watch the sunrise or uh, watch the sunset and not look at the sun, but look around the sun and allow uh, some of those rays to get in your eyes, you would be doing a version of this right here. You're going to reset your circadian rhythm much better. You're also going to generate uh, more intracellular melatonin which is going to help you sleep. It's a powerful antioxidant that does a lot of other things. Very therapeutic. Let's talk about number 12. This is called the desk reset. And the way to remember this is 20-20-20 rule. Okay? If you're sitting in your desk all day long, like today, I had to do a lot of research on different things. I was at my computer for at least uh, 10 hours so far. So every 20 minutes, I have a window and I'm going to look 20 feet out and focus on something. Ideally, it'd be good to go outside. And I, I have taken breaks today and, and went outside. And what you do for 20 seconds, you focus on something 20 feet away. Anyone can do that. It's super therapeutic. And it kind of reverses that uh, accommodation cramp that you have in your eye. Now, while you're doing this, okay, for 20 seconds, Every five seconds, you want to blink. Every five seconds, you want to blink as you're doing this, as you're focusing. Why? Because when you're in front of the computer, not only do you not blink as often, but you don't completely blink all the way down and your eyes can dry out and that drying can cause fatigue in the eyes. So this is another thing that's actually very, very important that also relates to number 13, which is dry eye. Being in front of your computer can really dry your eyes out. Also, a lack of vitamin A will cause dryness of the eye. But there's one other cause of dry eye that I need to make you aware of, and that is a, a problem with the autonomic nervous system. When you are deficient in vitamin B1, the autonomic nervous system doesn't work that great anymore. And that system controls the smooth muscle that controls your glands. And for this example, I'm talking about the tear ducts. You're going to have a lack of secretion of tears, and that's going to dry them out. And the antidote is B1. But you must also correct the reason why you're deficient in B1. A lot of carbohydrates, diabetes type 1, drinking a lot of coffee or tea can really deplete you of B1. And then the last point I want to talk about is these advanced glycated end products. This is that glycation when sugar connects with protein. Uh, this happens when you consume a lot of junk food and things like that. But there's things that can reverse that. Going on a low-carb diet, doing intermittent fasting. Another thing you can do to reduce this is alpha-lipoic acid reduces AGEs. And again, this can also help if you have an advanced uh, visual problems, uh, involving your lens being very rigid, or you have a lot of complications from diabetes anywhere in your body, or you have advanced uh, cataracts. You need to be doing all these things I'm mentioning. Exercise is a big one as well. Polyphenols, like certain herbs like uh, turmeric, resveratrol, and even dark chocolate. But probably the number one most powerful thing that can help you with this, as well as other problems with the eye, is vitamin D. Vitamin D is one of the best anti-inflammatories. It helps break this up. Always make sure you take magnesium with your vitamin D. And if you really want to know what vitamin D does in the body, not necessarily with diseases, but actually what it actually does, there's a fascinating video that I want to share with you right now. And it's right here. Check it out.